Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home program. I'm Carla Rodriguez from Complex. Before we are joined by our guests today, I want to let you know that the SAG After Foundation is a nonprofit organization that relies entirely on donations to provide emergency assistance and free educational programs to SAG After artists. This conversation is made possible thanks to the generosity of our supporters. Over the past year, the foundation has given over $6.5 million in COVID relief to more than 7,000 performers. If you are a SAG After artist and need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description in this video. Thank you for your support. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Jasmine Cephas Jones, Helen Hunt, Rafael Casal, Benjamin Turner, Jalen Barron, and Candace Nicholas Lipman from Blind Spotting. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so good to see everybody. Um, we're well into season one of Blind Spotting, the show. And so far, what I'm seeing from fans and what I'm feeling about the show has been phenomenal. Everybody's requesting for a one hour show instead of 30 minutes. What was it? How has it been like for you guys on your end to see the reactions that the show is getting? Amazing. <laughs> it's been really amazing, you know, um, just really proud because we worked really, really, really hard on this show. So the feedback has just been amazing and we're happy everyone's enjoying it so far. <laughs> what about you, Hub, our fellow in uh you know, you you were part of the movie, obviously, and now part of the show. What is it like to be able to see everybody's reactions like in real time? Uh, I think the show's, you know, I think the show tops the movie in a ton of ways. We learn so much in the film, you know, that we can now execute differently in, in a in a series. And for the first time, David and I really just get to be fans of the show in a different way. And so it's really fun to watch this this cast come together and tell this story so beautifully. And uh, I, I love that people want it to be an hour long show. We're never going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes is so hard. Like if anybody saw episode five, it's like, we couldn't do that for an hour. <laughs> like it needs to be, it needs to be over in 28 minutes. Well, yeah, because it's not, it isn't unlike any show I have ever seen. The dance sequences, the, the dream sequences, um, the verses that uh, Jasmine does as Ashley and Benjamin also, they're so beautiful. And I'm sure it takes a lot of preparation. What was uh, the, the motivation and the inspiration to add that to the show, to make it different than everything else? Um, I mean, I, I think for the most part, a lot of the conventions were things that somewhat already existed in the film. I think just with television, you have to be a little bit more um a little bit more confident in the choice and so while in the film we sort of are easing people into this idea of a world where verse and heightened movement exists the great thing about television is where we we experience so much of it we consume so much of it that we're ready for things to be heightened or different i think we're a little bit more game the commitment level is is less because we're just in our homes turning it on um and so with this we just came out the gate with verse directly at camera and made sure that the movement stuff was really established right right away as a strong convention in the pilot. So by the time we're getting to where a lot of people are now, which is, you know, episode five, six, seven, it's just another part of the language of the show. Um, and I think people sort of, they ad adapt their viewing experience to accommodate it and, and receive storytelling in these other ways. And that's, that's just a really exciting thing to have um, in the TV space. It's just done so beautifully. I mean, Jasmine and Benjamin, I'm sure you guys can talk about what it's like, actually the creative process of filming those scenes for you guys and where you go internally to be able to deliver those scenes. You know, <laughs> in every episode, it's it's something different. And, um, you know, a, a lot of the heightened verse that Ashley shares with the audience is part of her true feelings and in uh, her truest form. Um, you know, I didn't, we didn't want to make it feel like all of a sudden Jasmine is performing in front of the camera and it's this big performance that, you know, we wanted it to feel like it was still a part of the show and, and make sense. And so breaking down you know, the heightened verse and, and breaking down each thought and, and the beats um, was, was a little bit of a, a challenge, um, but, you know, it pushed me in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, it's one of my favorite things that, that Ashley does um, in the show. I think, 
every verse is is completely different of of where Ashley is um, at that time. Um, you know, the smashing of the hotel room is, you know, a completely different headspace of, you know, in the in the beginning of five. Um, when she really doesn't know what to do and, and um, she's, she's at a loss. So I think, um, you know, what Diggs and, and Rafa have done with the heightened verse um, with, and with Ashley is, is really awesome just to another way, another creative way of, it, of expressing where she is at the moment um, in her purest and, and truest form. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's it's so uh, so well done and you are phenomenal in those moments. Um, Benjamin, you have become obviously the, the heart of the show in a way. You know, like your scenes, you just steal every scene that you're in and you just like kind of add a, a level of humor to a, a show that covers such a heavy and like almost emotional um, topic. Can you add what it's like, what it has been like so far to be part of this show for you? The thing is, when everybody is so good, you're just you're you're, and I mean this to the truest, in, in the truest way. You were, um, I I felt very compelled to, to just try to honor the energy and the work that everyone around me was doing, um, and to to just show up for them to make sure that, um, okay, if if I know one of my castmates is really body in this moment. What does it look like to help that? What does it look like to honor that in the moments that I have? Um, I really didn't know. I really didn't know. I mean, Rafa could tell you, I really, me of all people, because I think I, I just, um, I'm a little bit uh, newer to this space of TV. I mean, I think we all have our newness to it, but I I'm, feel pretty fresh to, to all this but also because um, the growth of Earl is, is so, um, it just takes time, right? So in, in the first few episodes, we don't even know who he is and we don't really know what the reaction to him will be. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, being in the show just has been this really rich opportunity to learn from a bunch of people who uh, inspire me, who keep me on my toes. And then it's also been this, this sort of crazy thing of watching an audience fall in love with, with a character that, you know, you, you don't, you don't have to be anymore, at least in this moment. And so you're just like, Oh yeah, I guess I, I don't remember that take, but it, you know, yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing that people gravitate towards. And so it's, it's all overwhelming in the, in the best ways, I think. Yeah. And it's, it's, you're such a great addition to the show and it's, I, I love the, the character. Um, Going back to like the audition process, for those of you that weren't part of the film, Jalen, Candice, and Helen, you know, how, how was that like for you? I know, Helen, you've talked about how you got to meet Raphael and David on Twitter, but how was it like to, to be like, okay, I'm finally joining this universe that already exists, and how do I become part of it? How do I add to it? What was that like for you, Jalen, Candice, and everybody else? Um... I went through the standard audition process, you know, like through an agent submission and I had to do the callbacks and the chemistry reads and all that stuff. And the producer said it was a process, praise God. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, it, it was, it was nerve wracking, of course, because I wanted so badly to be a part of this project. I hadn't known of the movie or Rafa or Davina and stuff until I had received the audition. So once I watched the movie, I was like, Lord, if any, please, God, let me be a part of this project. Like it's about the messaging, the art. I fell so much in love with the film. So, um, yeah, it was it, it really was a process. <laughs> and um, when I found out that I looked at Rafa knows I was just like screaming and I was crying on the phone with him and David and you know, having to do the chemistry read with Ben and Jasmine, I was terrified. And yeah, you know, the whole process and the feels that we go through as actors, but, um, and then especially being the last addition to be added onto the cast, like they had already, you know, started building, you know, uh, the cast 
cast and everything, it was kind of like a little bit, um, a lot of pressure in that regard too. Cause I'm like, dang, I'm the last one. Oh God. You know? So, <laughs> but yeah, it was a process and I'm just grateful that they chose me. <laughs> well, I'm grateful that they chose you cause you're wonderful in the show also. Thank you. Oh, the audition process. I mean, it was definitely different than the other auditions I've been on because of COVID. So I was auditioning in my computer room. I don't know if anybody has like, you know, everybody got a computer room, I guess. Right. So I had like just like a plain white wall. You know, my phone was like falling off of my broken tripod or whatever, because I did not take the time to go fix that. Don't know why, but I didn't. And I mean, it was fun because I auditioned and I literally told one of my friends, like, imagine if I book being a stripper. I was like, please like right and then I got a call back and then I did the call back and I mean it went good from there um they were really really kind in the call back I think it's probably one of the nicest auditions I've had with producers and directors so I mean it was a little bit nerve-wracking because I saw Jasmine and I was like oh I was like there she go I was like she looks cool. <laughs> I was like there she is and then I saw Raphael and David and then um Jess and Keith were on the call as well our other producers but I mean after that I felt like something was different with this audition I felt like I I felt like it was for me in okay. and, um in my spirit and then after I had booked it, I was like, oh, OK. And I felt such like a calmness about it, if that makes sense. Like I was just like, ah, yes, this is this is the path that I'm supposed to be on right now. So, I mean, after that, I still couldn't believe that I'm on a TV show with all of these talented actors. And then right after that, I still don't believe it. Like I watch it on television and I'm like, it, are we sure? I'm like, are we sure people are, are seeing this right now? Like, I see people are watching it. I, I see their tweets. I see the comments. But it's still crazy to me because I'm like, ah, oh, like, okay, you know, we'll see. But I'm really, I'm really lucky to be able to have met all of these wonderful people in my life. And being able to be a part of a story like this is, is really important. I feel like, I feel like we're making TV history just a little bit because it's a little bit different than what we what we typically see so it's it's totally different I um one of the things that stands out for me is the writing on the show there's these little lines um that just like feel like poetry almost like monsters aren't under the bed they are cuffing in the night that to me I paused the show and I was like whoa I have to write that down and then the, the show, it is like, I'm, go, I'm not going to summer camp. I'm going to jail. That Those little lines that just stay with you. And then- Come on, Carla, spit. You better spit them bars, girl. <laughs> oh, you say, uh, Sean is a honey brown genius. Oh my God. I love, <laughs> love every single one of those lines. And what it doesn't make your jobs easier as actors to, to have such beautiful and strong writing. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you have really really strong writing that is the base and mm -hmm. you can just kind of let go and and let the writing do the most for you I think a lot of the times unfortunately sometimes we get scripts and we have to work harder and, and do more and wear a couple of hats than you know we we thought we were going to to, to wear so it's it's really beautiful and and such a a breath of fresh air to have such a strong base to work off of and i think that just makes character work easier that makes chemistry easier you know and gives you so much more room to play um and be comfortable because you don't have to work so hard um to make something work or make a scene work um so you know, we, we are blessed with amazing writers on this show and, um, you know, it, it is, it's, it's such a joy. And then with, you know, that this talented cast that we have, it's just, it really is a dream, you know, cause a writing is like everything. <laughs> in, yeah, in I, I agree. Yeah. And, um, one thing we're only five episodes in, but we've already seen the relationships and the characters progress so much, especially between the women on the show, which the show is such, such it's led by by women and the the bonds that they have with each other. So one of the most beautiful relations that I've seen is is uh, Ashley and her sister in law. 
you know, <laughs> from the beginning they butt heads, but as, as we get like more into the season, you kind of see them sort of accepting, like, even though they're so different, they accept themselves and they, uh, they're, they, they're starting to like protect themselves like family. What was it like for you both to play that, to play those roles and like show that progression with your characters? Um, I mean, for me, it was, it was pretty easy because I've had a similar situation in real life. So I was just like, oh, life imitates art. It's all good. But I mean, working with Jasmine, she's such a great scene partner and she gives you so much to work with that it felt effortless almost. And you see the effort that she puts into her scene. And when she's, you know, reciting her lines, it makes you want to go harder because it's like she's like giving you her all. And it's like, OK, well, I can't. I can't half do this right now. So let me, let me go hard too. So she really brings out, I feel like the best in you. And I mean, the writing, like you said, it makes everything 10 times easier. And uh, Rafael and David give us, give us the freedom to be able to ad lib if we want to. And like, Lord knows I like to do that. So, <laughs> so I mean, it, it's great. I mean, you know, it's, it's fun. It's, it's good stuff. And I know um, Rainy and Ash's relationship is also so beautiful to me. Um, Rainy is literally the mother-in-law we all wish we had, I think, <laughs> you know, she supports you, but she also lets you be and she uh, doesn't overstep and she uh, she's there. The tie with you, you know, um, she gets high with you. So that's good. Yeah, that that is different, <laughs> but I, I respect it. Um, Helen, what what is it like for you to play this character? I know I know you. Uh, you really had to think about before joining the show and um, because of your relationship and your friendship with uh, Raphael and David, what has it been like for you so far with uh, this blind spotting show? I mean, I didn't have to think about it too hard. <laughs> Rafa was like, all right, I should stop making jokes. Do you want to be in this? And I said, yeah, I need these three things. I said, okay. I was like, all right. <laughs> so it wasn't that torturous a process. Um, it's amazing. It's nothing like this is what I can tell you. We're all politely in our little boxes and this is nothing like what it's like <laughs> when we're together. It's a happy group. Um, everybody shows up some beautiful combination of totally ready and prepared and totally free and into having fun. Even when we were wrapped in gauze and plastic, you know, that was hard, but I still felt everybody was showing up to have fun and with joy and care, you know, so that's, that was amazing. That's basically what it's like when we're there. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of the, the things that are going on in the show right now, they're kind of unspoken, mm -hmm. like Rainey's health. And then, uh, Ashley's inner turmoil with like having to tell this big traumatic thing to her son. Um, I feel like a lot of women kind of live in that space where they keep a lot of secrets to protect their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. kind of put their loved ones like before themselves almost. And I think that is so beautiful in the way that it's done quietly on the show, but it's still very obvious this, the, the struggles and the turmoil, turmoils that women go through. Is that something that like really, um, has been special for you to play on this show. Well. Yeah, I mean, I think you're really insightful. That is true. It's true of me, Rafa knows. <laughs> it's deeply true. So, and I've never seen anybody write about it. I mean, in Titanic, they said a woman's heart is an ocean full of secrets. And that's one of the most beautiful lines in, uh, I think, in, in movie <laughs> history. Um, Ashley, what, what was it like for you to kind of put yourself in that, in that space as an actor to have to share such heavy news with a child? I know for a lot of children in the country, millions of children in the country, that's something that they go through on a daily basis is learning to live with their, their parents being in jail. Yeah, I actually had, um, you know, a, re a relative that was in Rikers Island for a couple of years. And, you know, <clears throat> this whole visitation process is, is not new to me at all. And the struggle of just trying to see your loved one and just tell them that you love them, you know, you're almost treated like a prisoner yourself of just on your way to, to go through all the tests and, and everything just to try to get to see them. And so, you know, I, I pulled a little bit from that, from my own experience, but, you know, it's, it's Ashley's constant struggle, right? It's her constant burden that she has throughout the whole season, basically, of how do you tell your son that his father is in jail? How, what is the best way to do this? 
And, you know, Ashley's constantly struggling of dealing with the circumstances that she has, how to be the, me- the best mother in this process. Um, and so doing that scene with Atticus, he's just <laughs> the cutest little <laughs> human being on earth. And he's so sweet and he just, you know, breaks your heart, but it is, it is a real thing you know, and, and a lot of family members have to sit down with, um, you know, the children of the family to, to say this, it's, it's how do you break this awful news? You know, it's like a death. It's like, it's somebody being taken away, you know, from, from a loving space. So um, I hope that answers your question. Well, for sure. And I, I know that this is a topic like a, mass incarceration directly affects minorities and minority families are the ones who are left to deal with the loss of a family member, even if it's for just a certain period of time, it kind of rearranges the way your whole life is. Because now you have to worry about visitations, now you have to worry about making sure they're safe and they are also continuing your life outside. And in order to be able to do that successfully, you need a support system. So as a, you know, as the cast members that are the support system like Trish and uh, Janelle and Rainey what was that what is that like for you to like kind of surround Sean and Ashley as as they're they're struggling with this the importance is for me to remind my sis that she's not alone I am returning after being gone for five years and that itself has a lot that needs to be unpacked because then I just come back and I show up So I left and now I'm back and now I'm trying to some way prove myself to her. Like, look, sis, I know I left, but I'm still here for you. I'm still loyal to you and you and baby boy are not alone. And to know that I am still a part of your village, you know, and I feel that Janelle just wants to remind her that she doesn't have to take this burden on by herself. And I feel that that's what Ash is doing right now. You know, she's like, I got to be strong alone. I got to do it alone. And it's like, no, lean on your support system, lean on your family, lean on your friends. Um, And to know that I feel too, that Janelle is extremely protective. Mm -hmm. You know, she's very loving, very protective, especially when it comes to baby boy and everything. Um, And she just wants to, it's just hard. Janelle's in a hard place right now because I feel like she's really trying. She has to almost like build herself back up in Ashley's life and at a time where everything is falling apart for Ashley, you know? So it's like, I really have to just show her, look, I'm back for real, for real, sis, and I'm not leaving you this time, you know? Or if that's how she felt, you know, I don't know. We got to unpack that, you know, but um, I just feel that, yeah, it's very important for Janelle. She just wants to let her know, hey, I'm still that ride or die that I was in sixth grade, you know, and I'm not going to leave you. So just lean on me like I'm here. Like, help me to relieve some of that burden for you. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's beautiful to see that sort of friendship because we can't get by in life without friends and without yeah. support of a support system. Um, one of my favorite like scenes in the show, like through the episodes, is just seeing the the moments that Ashley shares with Miles, even though he's in jail. She has these moments that are like dreams almost, but I feel like it's also how a lot of people cope when they're going through things. It's like it there there are scenarios that you creating your mind, perhaps you have dreams or things that you're writing down in order to deal with your, your emotions. Is that what the, the purpose of those scenes was for you, Raphael, when creating these? And what was it like for you both to film these, knowing that Miles is in jail? I think in terms of like the, the, like all the writers sort of agreed that we needed to have a, a really strong emotional understanding of Miles uh, and Ashley when they're good. So that we could fully appreciate what the, what kind of a loss this was without it just being described to us, but we could see the the beauty of their relationship. And so, um, and, and Jasmine and I would talk a lot about uh, relationships and what Miles and Ashley's life was like. And once we realized sort of the depth of how many years they had been together before this happened, we realized that so much of your decision making becomes in tandem with another person. And so even when they're pulled away, your brain is still seeking the other person for, for counsel. And so I think for us, we're like, well, how do we manifest that in a visual way in the show? And this idea that Miles is sort of conjured when she wants to be in groupthink with her partner, 
Um, and seeing her, you know, try to pull away from that or try to redefine herself uh, with that, but also comfort her loneliness through that sort of that uh, that imagining of, of Miles's presence just felt really beautiful and dev- devastating simultaneously. And it and it um, and then in terms of the 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 work itself, I mean, I think Jasmine and I are always like re- ready and excited to like be in a scene together and kind of spar as actors because we just have a good time doing it. I think we. We like writing scenes that are harder and harder and harder for us to do. Um, Cause I think we're, um, uh, we're obsessive in that way about, about getting to, getting to do all the things as actors we want to do. Um, and so I think Miles and, and Ashley are a great conduit for that where we can kind of, we can dig deeper and deeper into a, into a relation and into all the facets of what complicates a relationship and then spar those out with each other. Right. Cause they both feel so familiar to each other, even in like on screen, it's just like, you can, you can almost feel like they've been together for like what, 16 or so years. Even it, I think it helps that also that you guys are friends in real life. So you have that sort of like bond with each other. Um, can you guys share what, what it was like to film that scene where um, Sean goes to visit his dad for the first time. And then he, he witnesses the things that his dad is really going through in jail and he kind of shuts down. And that's what happens to a lot of children when they go through trauma is like, they just completely um, put up a wall. You know, uh, so that episode was written by Mr. Benjamin Earl Turner. Wow. Uh, that would be episode seven. Um, uh, we, you know, I think the show has been, been building to that moment for, um, you know, for the whole season of this Sean, Sean becoming aware of the reality of his own circumstance. Um, and so I, I think we, we knew that they were going to come in and be rooting for this to go well. Um, and again, we're reminded of of the true villain of the show, which is this, you know, the prison industrial complex and the, and the effect that it has on families. And so I think periodically it's the show's job to remind you that, like, while while a villainous system can create villains in all of us, we are we are still just um, a consequence of something that happened to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so watching watching Miles and and Sean and Ashley in that scene are the consequences of something that they have almost no control over. And then we watch the, and that really, for me, what I love so much about that episode is for the first time we see the whole family sort of rush in to, to, to aid in the, in the, the stabilizing of Sean after that experience. And you see, Janelle come in and, and, and do all the things that she's done as like, as like his aunt and his, you know, as somebody who loves him so much, try to cheer him up her way. And we see, um, we see Earl come in and try to find his way to fit into this. And we see that Rainey as a, as his grandmother is, is not only trying to fix him, but is also like, she's heard a lot of her dialogue is more long-term. It's more like, we need to figure out like a plan for this, which is something that I feel like would only come from that character. Um, and Trish is still in her, like, I need to sort my own shit out. And we've got her, we've got her sort of present, but in that thing that we all are when we're a bit younger, we're still really consumed with our own problems as if they are the biggest things um, happening in the world. And watching that, watching that dynamic in that bowling alley is like, I still like, I think about that, that shooting day all the time of just like how much fun it is to watch on screen now of everybody in the same space. Yeah, it's like a ping pong game. You just see everybody dealing, like handling things different and how they react to, to the situation in such a unique way. And I know that right now the focus is on what they're going to do in the present moment that Miles is in jail for the next five years and how the family's coping with it. But also there's kind of like a lingering feeling through Earl that it doesn't end after he leaves jail you know, there's an aftermath and kind of like a ripple effect that not only affects Miles from this point forward, but also his family. Like we see it through Earl. He, uh, he's plugged into his home. He has to be home at a certain time, which is also what happened in the movie. And, uh, it kind of shows that for a lot of people who have been in that situation and for people who have never experienced it, that like going to jail is one thing, but then how it affects the rest of your life is another. Um, Benjamin, can you talk a little bit about that, especially since your character is the one that's dealing with this? Yeah, I think um, a lot of what we sort of had to be aware of was the long arm of a system. I think it's really um, unfortunate that so much of the 
the elements of the carceral state rely on our forgetting or not being involved or our sort of negligence to pay attention to all the different ways that it impacts in all the different sectors. And I think that's one of the things that we really wanted to capture both in particular characters, whether Miles going away, we capture, okay, this is what it can be like to be being sentenced and to be actually going away to jail. But wow, this is what it looks like for a partner. This is what it looks like for a family to deal with that. And, and we might think, oh, that's all. That's the carceral state. That's the impact it has. And then we're like, no, it, it actually follows you. It actually is this sort of haunting. It is this sort of ghost that even once you go through the process, we have Earl to sort of demonstrate, well, this is what it can look like. These are the after effects, not just tangibly in terms of the constraints and realities of those constraints, having PO officers, pro officers, or, um, you know, having curfews, but also the mental impact, the emotional implications. Um, how do you settle yourself? How do you become social in the way and in, in function in the social norms when you're in a place or you participated in a place where the social norms are, are meant to dehumanize you, right? To not be social at all. So all these different elements, I think, are, are the things we sort of wanted to shine a light on because part of what I think makes the show interesting is that we just lift up rugs that anyone could lift up that are just right there. It's, it, we, it's not that we don't, we lift them up, but we had to crawl through a jungle. We just choose not to lift them up. And that's why they have the power they have. And so it's really, um, it's been pretty interesting to just say, oh, like this is all under here too. Uh, and I think that's part of the work of the show. And then ushering you through what we find under that rug with a lot of laughter, um, because otherwise we can't, we can't deal with that stuff. Right. I know um, for me, what stood out about the show is that like I'm so sick and tired of seeing shows that are about minorities and, and the crime and the certain things that they're doing wrong. And then that's all I feel like that's all what what Hollywood kind of focuses on is just drug dealers. And uh, especially for like Latino audiences, it's all about the cartel and these shows about and it's exhausting to only be portrayed in that way almost I feel like what this show shows is uh, the human side of what happens when you do make a bad decision um, and, and what sometimes happens, yeah go ahead. So, sorry and sometimes when you don't even make a bad decision right. I think that's the we always think everyone's made a bad decision and sometimes maybe oftentimes no one made a bad decision at all you made you made the right decision for the given circumstances and and we have a system that says oh that's that's bad a system that we could change it. So I think, yeah, all the more so to your point. Sorry. I think that's the, I think that's the big important thing to remember. So, and in a lot of ways, what Earl represents, right. Is like, is somebody who was incarcerated for something that is now a billion dollar industry, you know, in the span of two years. And so the, the, con, the, the notion of, of, of right and wrong is sort of subject to the power structures that are in place. And I think that that ends up to, that ends up playing a turn in the in the Earl thread of like well who gets to decide what is you know what is legal and Ill illegal what is right and wrong and when those things change when that when that's when that foundation moves from under you and you still have to deal with the repercussions of it for the rest of your life how do we how do we sort of how do we navigate the concept of justice and, and when it's when the needle keeps moving to benefit one group and be at the detriment of another. Right. And that's it. I feel like for for minority communities, that's a lot of, of what people are dealing with. They have family members who are in jail because of something they didn't even do or something that like other people could get away with. And uh, it still affects them and it still damages their entire life. And the show does such a good job at covering this topic. And another thing that has been um, on my mind since I saw it is a conversation about col like colorism and uh, biracial identity and what it means to be black and what it means to just be biracial. And I think Janelle did such a beautiful job at explaining what her experience has been like uh, growing up because of col colorism and how the other people she's talking to didn't really understand because they didn't go through it. Can you talk about that specific uh, conversation? Uh, sorry, Candace. Um, are you call me Janelle? It's okay. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's actually one of my favorite episodes I love that 
Rafa and David are having this kind of conversation in this show, especially me being a dark skinned black woman. And I and Rafa, everybody knows when we were shooting this, it was really hard for me during shooting this. And Rafa had to give me a notes to help me shift it because I have all of my own trauma growing up and being a dark skinned woman. So everything that they wrote, going back to your point about the great writing literally was me like I was like I have literally lived this and am still living this as a black woman and also going back to your point where you're saying us not being depicted as people of color in only certain roles right and that's another thing that I love about how they have uh how they have said that Janelle is going to be and how they've allowed me to develop her that Janelle is this She's not just one sided. She's not this bitter, hateful, angry black woman. Like, I don't have to be sassy. I don't have to be the sassy black woman in this show. You know, I get Janelle gets to be multidimensional. And I love that they are allowing me to do that as an artist, you know, um, for her to be this type of person that's like, listen, I'll put hands on you, but I'll also pray on to the ancestors on your behalf. OK, <laughs> so, you know, she's very multifaceted. And I love that. And I love that viewers get to see a dark-skinned Black woman who is multi-layered, who's rocking her locks, who is unapologetically who she is as a dark-skinned Black woman. Listen, I love it, you know, and I'm I'm so honored and grateful for all the little dark-skinned Black girls and all the Black women that are looking at Janelle and being like, man, I could see myself finally, and I'm not having to play the welfare mama who has a baby daddy who's not taking care of her, who's angry and bitter and hates the world, who's uneducated, who just has nothing going for herself. I love that we are now shifting that narrative that Black women are way more than that. So I'm very grateful. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the your character is absolutely beautiful because it's warm and it's caring and it's loving and it's like uh, so supportive of everybody else, but you still hold everybody accountable in a way that's mm -hmm. gentle and respectful. And um, Jalen, your character is such a, a source of joy on the show. Um, so much energy comes from you. Uh, what is it like for you to play this role? And like you said, playing a stripper. I mean, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's somebody that I've never been able to play before. And I mean, Trish, she has so many different layers to her. You never really know what you're going to get in each scene with her. And that's especially what I love about her is that she's just up and down all the time. But I mean, in... it means a lot to me because I feel like people oftentimes judge sex workers right mm -hmm. and strippers and they just think like oh you know that's what they want to be doing like it's like oh they don't care about this they don't care about their body and it's like well you know that's really not true and I learned a lot from a few of my friends who are strippers and you know being around them that they are doing what they have to do like Trish you know and she um in episode four no, I'm sorry, three, she didn't want to go on stage. And I feel like a lot of women can identify with that, regardless of what their job is, is that they're putting on their face, they're about to go into the workspace, and they're going to get it done. And I mean, that was really important for me to represent that because as women, we often get denied that respect and, you know, male dominated spaces and Trish shows that emotion throughout that episode of like trying going hard and then it being taken away from her so it's really important for me to be to be able to portray that character and have people see um strippers in that light and be a little bit more understanding and a little bit less judgmental of their lifestyle choices right and she's also like a go-getter and she wants to be a business owner and she's so young but still so ambitious so it's a beautiful character to yeah, see yeah and she's fun she's the turn up queen <laughs> and you, and you <laughs> turn up queen around it's such a it's such a heavy show at times and you need the kind of that like uh that lightness you yeah, know, you, need, you need you need the the Mexican girl to come around and be like, hey, who wants a shot? Let's take a shot. You a shot? <laughs> yeah, when well, you're like crying in a corner at a party and somebody yeah. comes in like, Ooh, like, come yeah. here, come dance, come on, let's go. Like that's what you need. Everybody needs a little bit of that in their life, and I, that's what I really like about Trish because I'm not the girl. I'm probably the girl in the corner, uh, chilling, hanging out by myself, <laughs> and then Trish will come around and be like, girl, what you doing over there? I'm like, you right. Let me let me go step out for a second. So. <laughs> But we all need that. And I think that's what it, every every character on the show has such a place in this world. And it's so important. Every little word that they say, everything that they do. And I think you guys make a wonderful cast and you're creating such a beautiful show. And congratulations to you all. So thank you very much for spending this time with me. And 
On behalf of the SAG AFTRA Foundation, I want to thank you for sharing your experiences, your process and craft with your fellow performers. Thank you all so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.